evening. I think I'm live. Yes, I am live. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Watching the icons at the bottom of the screen go on is kind of an interesting experience. So, welcome. Thanks for joining me on my Facebook Live, um, which will be on YouTube later on. Uh, this is going to be a deep topic tonight, but I wanted to do this because I've seen three friends of mine online on Facebook um, posting about their real challenging heartbreak, their pain, their suffering, their wounds, everything else. And I wanted to talk about this now. So, before I start with that, let me introduce myself to you in case you haven't watched my broadcast before. My name is Barry Selby. I am a relationship attraction expert, best-selling author and speaker, and I also help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, and if you watch my broadcast on Friday and Saturday, you now know why, because I talked about it there and had a big epiphany on Friday about my own origin story, as it were. But tonight, I want to talk about this because this is why... I s let, me, let me do a quick diagonal back to that for a second. I discovered in my live broadcast, because it literally wasn't, I didn't get it until I said it on Friday, that an incident I watched when I was a teenager between my mom and my dad was probably the first time I saw and witnessed a woman in, her, in, in deep wounding emotionally that I wanted to help, to fix, to change, and I couldn't at the time. Many years later, I now have skills that can help with that. I can't help my mother now, I mean, she's passed away, but... The truth is that one of my greatest gifts, service, and loves is helping women be whole, to be healed, to be free of the wounds that they've taken on from past relationships. So tonight's topic, which is Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart, number 242. Yes, I do this every day. There's a lot of these out there. I want to speak to this part because being in the relationship arena conversationally, it's easy to talk about where well, you've got to get your vision right and you've got to go on many dates and you've got to use these apps and I can refer you to a matchmaker and do your, all the charts and everything and other things. And frankly, that's important. I'm going to say this. I've got to be a bit very careful to say this. It is important. It's part of what I do in my coaching as well. However, what a lot of coaches miss and a lot of services miss and apps miss and other things miss too is healing the wounds. And yes, you can go see a therapist, which is one option, um, I've got a background in psychology, so I, can, I do have that um, aspect of my skills, tools in my toolbox. But the biggest part for me is seeing my friends healing, becoming whole, becoming healthy. So let me speak to the wounding part first. And I'm going to see what I can do. I'm not going to name any names. So if you're watching this video, and you're, if you're watching this video live or in the replay, um, I may be mentioning things from your posts, but I won't mention any names. But there's a theme that I saw. These, to, in these three, these three women in particular. Now, some of this stuff is going to apply to men too, but I want to talk to women, particularly because that's my audience. The biggest thing I would say that I saw, well, I'm sorry, the, the common element I saw in these three different women's posts was it's kind of like herring up here again. That was kind of the, the, the um, blunt way of saying it. How did I end up here again? And in two of the cases in particular, they were talking about how this current relationship that just ended was very familiar to them, like the previous one. And I'll speak to that part a little bit later on, but I'll speak more to the immediate stuff, which is the wounding, the hurt, the heartache, and, and the sense of being broken. And self-blame that comes up too. Because for, for one, of, one of these women in particular I watched and saw in her, her, her comment about the sense of over-responsibility she had on herself because she felt like she was somehow responsible because she didn't want to blame the guy. Now, I can sense an honor in that, but what I feel is what's missing is, yes, we all have responsibility in all our interactions, in relationships, in everything we do, we have responsibility. The challenge comes up when you involve another person because there's two senses of responsibility. If one person abdicates, does that mean you take on both? No. And in relationships in particular, there's a discord, there's a um, forgotten rule, perhaps, that, <laughs> okay, it comes out of this one. This is like when you go backpacking the forest, what you take in, you bring out. Same thing in relationships. I'm going to play with this because it just came up as an idea, so I'm going to see if this has any merit. So I'm just adjusting my, my back pillow. Um, Taking out what you put in, meaning that if you make a mess in your relationship, it's your job to clean it up and take it away, to get to remove it, 
Now, if your partner and you had a massive breakup, actually, no, it's not even that way. I'm sorry, I'm going to stick to, the, I'm going to stick to these three women in particular because that was the inspiration for this talk. All three of them were with men that basically don't, did not respect them, that hurt their feelings, that stamp, stamped all over them. And they were, all these women were emotionally devastated. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's one of the most painful things for me to watch is seeing a woman wounded emotionally. It's, it's painful. It's, it's almost as painful as seeing a guy wounded emotionally, but it's more painful for me personally watching a woman be emotionally wounded. So when I see that happen or watch that happen, I, my heart goes out to them, which is probably why I'm good at my coaching because it's that love, the support that I provide. Maybe, I don't know, you have to talk to my clients about that. I can't speak to that myself or I won't. Let's put it that way. Except I just did. Mm, okay. Get it back on track. The biggest immediate work to do when you have gone through this emotional breakup, um, heartbreak, challenge, everything else, is to really, put it simply, forgive yourself. Nine times out of ten, what's happening is you're judging yourself with a club you're banging yourself over the head with, like, I shouldn't have done that. I, I didn't mean to do that. I blame myself for this, that, and the other. Stop it. You, it, doesn't be, it doesn't become you. It doesn't serve you. And you don't deserve it. So if you're in this place where you've been through this heartbreak, this, this hurt, this, this distress in a relationship, be willing to forgive and love yourself first. The deeper work I'll talk about in a second. And that's the big stuff. Ooh, the big stuff. We'll get to that in a second too. All right, we'll talk about it now. I'm just watching, I'm watching my mind just go through this sequence of things. Let's we'll get, talk about it now. The, th the common thread I mentioned in all three relationships was about how do they end up here again? They were saying like, you know, how, how do they end up back here again? Well, part of that, part of that is the, the unspoken second part of the sentence is because they should have, should have known better because they've been here before. That um, declaration that people say is true because nine times out of ten in relationships, especially in cyclical, cyclical, cyclical or serial relationships, it is the same thing again happening every time. I spoke to them before in my videos about the three the relationships I went through that were repetitive experiences, different people, different women. It's kind of like being, you know, it's, it's different, different soup, the same person inside. It's the same experience. And for these women who've been through this heartbreak for the third time, in some cases, if not more, the opportunity that is available, the big work, which I'm going to say that now, is that it's not the easiest work to do, is to start where it began. Which means that if you were in a relationship that is the same as the one before that, as the one before that, as the one before that, with the same disruption, upsets, heartache, pain happens, yes, it does lie within you to fix it, resolve it, heal it, which is the biggest victory because it doesn't require anybody else to do that in terms of another partner. And by the way, for those of you out there thinking that, well, I've been through so many wounds, I'll find a man who will love me so much it'll heal me. Don't go there. It doesn't work. Because first of all, you won't attract a man like that. You're likely to attract a man who will do the same thing again to you that happened to the one before. Same thing. Sorry, you'll attract a man who will do the same thing to you again that happened, that happened with the past relationship. And by the way, flip this for the men. Same thing happens for us too, men. We attract women to our lives that repeat the same patterns with us that we did in the ones before. So just in case you're wondering, ladies, both genders had the same issue. But I'm speaking to women, particularly in this use of the pronouns and everything else. So it's for you specifically, because more women watch my videos anyway. So it seems apropos. So the big piece. If you've experienced the same thing happening at least three times in different relationships, like the same three, in three different relationships, the same thing happened, that was painful, upsetting, hurt feelings, disruption, heartache, all these different things. I can pretty much, not guarantee, always, but pretty much guarantee that that pattern started when you were about five years old. Yeah, when you were about five years old. We adult beings are generally run by a five-year-old inside. Yes, imagine that. All these adults running around the planet, including the White House, by the way. <laughs> I had to do that one. Are being run by a five-year-old inside, 
It's kind of like having these little little aliens inside a head driving the, the ships around. If you ever saw uh, Men in Black, you might remember a bit one of the characters like that. But it's kind of like that. Our subconscious mind, which is the five-year-old, takes in the world around us. And I've said this before, but I'm giving you a different slant on it. Has taken on this um, belief about the way the world works from the way it saw life as a five-year-old. So if you look back at your own life when you're five years old, or maybe even three years old, maybe as old as seven, but generally between, between zero and five years old, look at the world around you. And if you remember that far back, how were you treated by your parents or your grandparents or your uncles or your aunts or your brothers or your sisters? How did they treat each other? And I'm meaning this more about the interactions versus what they said, because nine times out of ten, it's, it's not the words, it's the actions. So if you can remember back to when you were three, four, five years old, and you probably would remember this if it's not been suppressed, as a memory of going, oh yeah, I remember that now. If something happened when you were very young, that was something you registered as a painful experience or as a negative experience, which could have been abuse, addiction, workaholism, neglect, cheating, whatever it was. I'm going to go slower because I want to make sure we get this because this is, this, is this is a game changer for you, a life changer if you get this. For most people out there, and not everybody, but for most people watching, men and women, the way we do relationships as an adult is massively influenced by the way we watched adults around us when we were five years old do relationship. We copied it, basically. And again, that five-year-old is in our head running the show because our subconscious mind is, a, is magnitudes more powerful than our conscious mind. So we may say, well, I want this, 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 and this. And you say, great. Meanwhile, the subconscious mind is going to go, yeah, but I want this, 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 and all this stuff. And the subconscious mind has right of way. I hope you get in this. Having right of way means it will guarantee to get that result. Some of you may have a light bulb going off, and some of you might be going, oh, shit, <laughs> to be blunt, because it's not pretty to know this, but it's a game changer. Because when you start to get understanding of this is when you can change it. And if you want to change your, life, your love life now, your dating life now, that's where the fix comes in. That's where the change happens. It's a blend of that and, as I mentioned before, the inner healing now, forgiveness and love for who you are now. Um, I, I don't want to go too far into this because I could go for about four hours. And this, I mean, this is what I, when I'm coaching with clients. It's a big piece of work. But I want you to get these points and understandings now because this is basically will give you leverage to change the way you choose your relationship partners. Because, as I said, your um, five-year-old is making the decisions for you, even though you think you're making the ones as an adult. You may be swiping right on Tinder, for example, or clicking match on match or on other apps, whatever apps you're using, and getting dates. But I pretty much guarantee you that within a period of time, it might be the first few weeks, it might be a few years even, in that relationship, that pattern's going to keep showing up again. The same pattern that happened when you were five years old. Yeah, isn't that fun? So, I have some advice for you. Be easy on yourself. Be gentle on yourself. This is not, this is not good news, I know, but it is good news in a way. By having the understanding of your history and your choices, you can change your future to what you really want. And a little PS. That PS is this. If you have had horrendous relationships where your partner's abused and hurt you, it does not mean you judge yourself and blame yourself because you had it when you were five years old. I don't want you to take that on. If you got abused or hurt in a relationship on when any level that was, take care of yourself. That's why I say about forgiveness and love for yourself. It's not about the other person. In this case, it's about you, but not about you being overly responsible for what happened. Again, these are subconscious programs. You had no control, no control, no choice over this. But if you're willing to do the work to make a new arrangement with your five-year-old, and it's kind of a new arrangement because you're parenting your five-year-old is what you're really doing. In a, and I'm giving you very big terms for a much deeper piece of work, so I'm not going to teach you that here. But I give you the idea of what's happening. When you become the new parent to your five-year-old, you get a new relationship between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. So what runs the show in here is in agreement. And when you have that in agreement, your choices for relationships will improve dramatically, whether you're swiping on Tinder or clicking on Match or whatever you're doing. Because the platforms are irrelevant. It's where you're coming from that makes the difference. 
So if you've been dealing with this part, in this this challenge least recently, and I said these three women I watched online, on Facebook have been posting these heartrending stories of what's been happening, and I feel for them. This is the biggest clue, suggestion, insight I can provide, as a um, as a step in the direction where you can go to get what you want. If you want to find out more how I can help you, please reach out to me. But I want to make sure you get these points for yourself because, first of all, it isn't your fault that they're clear. Yes, it is your five-year-old subconscious mind making it happen, but it didn't know any different. So don't judge yourself or your five-year-old. It's infused programming that goes into your subconscious, like, um, like being a sponge filling up with water. You don't judge a sponge for the water that's in it. Same thing with your five-year-old. It took on what you saw around it as a natural understanding without any knowing different, right, wrong, or whatever. It saw that out. It, what happens is your five-year-old saw the way your parents interacted and took that as law, as the way things are. And then as an adult, you tend to repeat it automatically. That's the simplest way of putting it. It's a bit more complex than that, but that's the simplest way of explaining it. So if that makes sense to you, I hope it does. Um, good. If it gives you some insights about what you can do to change your own story and their own future, even better. But again, it starts with self-love, self-forgiveness, and self-acceptance. Whatever happened to you in the last relationship, happened. It's not about you. It's about how you treat yourself now. So, I think I, I, think I explained, I think I did actually answer all the things I put in the title, because I put a few things in the title at one time for this, this talk. Um... I hope this helps. If you have any thoughts, questions, please reach out to me. If you want to put questions below, I'll answer them when I get offline. Um, if you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. This might help them heal, perhaps. It might help them wake up to their possibilities. Um, this isn't the pretty one, I know. But I want to put this out there because it's a big piece of the work. I think that's about it. Quick reminders, by the way. You can watch all of these Facebook Lives on my business page more easily because they're all listed there and together. So you go to barrysobby.author on Facebook, you can see them there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the rest of them under the message, Messages from the Masculine playlist. You're welcome. Absolutely welcome. Um, you can watch this on my playlist, uh, Messages from the Masculine playlist under Barry Selby, which is my username on YouTube, of course. And you also end up my website. And if you go to my website, which is barrysobby.com, there's tons of content out there, including this video and the other 241. <laughs> there's a lot of these Facebook Lives, and they're doing daily. I just Actually, today I just had a memory come up of a year ago, where I did Messages for the Masculine number nine. <laughs> I was doing them weekly back then, so they were all spread out, but I'm going from nine to 242. I had no plan of going that far when it started, but apparently there's content, so I'm sharing this out when I can. So, with that, a reminder to all of you, if you're watching this now or in, in replay, please take care of yourself. You know best how to take care of yourself, and the better you do that, the better you'll be able to be in love. So you want an amazing relationship? That's another key, by the way. Treat yourself right. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Please share it with people who might need to get value, from, who might get value from this. And I'll see you again tomorrow with another topic with messages from the masculine. That'll be 243. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.